the purpose of pure islam make human being reach his purpose of creation pure islam has only one ideology la ilaha illallah is the policy of islam la means deny everything except allah ilah in arabic means one who gives orders so you have to deny the orders of everyone else and this is pure islam wake up ayya ala salah you got a fasala afternoon sitting with the client 5000 pounds bribe what happens here la ilaha illallah cross pure islam means pure no adulteration in each and every segment of your life you have to deny the orders of others the first other is your own carnal desires bismillah ar rahman ar rahim assalamu alaikum so for a for, for, for a believer who wants to understand pure islam can you name some personalities after the holy prophet and more particularly in the recent past whose conduct and whose character can be seen as you know a role model for us and we we'll no, say no. okay they were on the right path and then we we can follow them see there are there are two streams of this discussion right when you talk about pure islam right first the definition of pure islam hmm. with its specifics mm-hmm. should be clear to everyone right and what is that pure islam as i said the purpose of pure islam is to take human being make human being reach his purpose of creation yes pure islam first first definition is this hmm. okay the second definition is the ideology hmm. pure islam has only one ideology hmm. la ilaha illallah right you might say everyone recites la ilaha illallah yeah, every is but in its essence la ilaha illallah is not a slogan hmm. it's a kal- it's a kalama hmm. kalama we think that kalam is from the mouth no kalama in arabic is a means policy i see la ilaha illallah is the policy of islam right means you have to deny la means deny yes everything except allah right ilah 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 hmm. means one who is the commander one who gives command one who orders hmm. ila in arabic means one who gives orders right so you have to deny the orders of everyone else and only accept the order of allah subhanahu wa taala right this is pure islam mm-hmm. you might be saying allah says 4 am in the morning salat i am doing salat see i am muslim allah says do not eat haram you are following but allah says do not submit to a taghut Hmm. to a tyrant but i am submitted hmm. Hmm. so your la ilaha illallah your policy of islam is not complete that is not pure islam pure islam means in every segment of your life every affair of your life you have to deny the orders of others now in others also others just doesn't mean people's other human beings the first other is your own carnal desires hmm. Hmm. like you you go somewhere for a business deal right he says i need some bribe there's a big opportunity 100000 pounds profit is there for me and i can good money he's asking for 5 5% 5000 now what do you do over here you start to think oh, what how does it matter let me pay some bribe 5000 pound hmm. who is asking you to do that you have a command on you someone has commanded you hmm. who has commanded your desire hmm. your nafs amara your carnal desire hmm. the desire is told you give it what's the problem 95000 pounds you are earning give 5000 bribe hmm. Hmm. but if you now go to allah's order allah says you cannot do this hmm. Hmm. so what have you done over here you have ignored law over here morning allah said wake up ayya ala salah you got up for salah hmm. la ilaha illallah check afternoon sitting with the client 5000 pounds bribe what happens here la ilaha illallah cross hmm. now you are with la not with illallah hmm. 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 so pure islam means pure no adulteration in hmm. each and every segment of your life you have to deny the orders of others hmm. all those orders which are against the orders of allah subhanahu wa taala right like you might say parents also give us orders hmm. we deny them no if the orders of the parents are 
the same as the orders of Allah, then that is like following the orders of Allah. Hmm. Hmm. It's not like that. Allah is giving them the authority. So la, pure Islam, the second point is what? La ilaha illallah. Right. You have to deny every deviant entity which could be in your own self, which could be even your parents. Your parents might, the parents might ask a girl, why do you want to wear hijab in this society? Hmm. Don't do hijab. Right. It happens. I've seen in Pakistan, many parents say to their daughters want to do hijab, they say, no, you will not get good proposals hmm. if hmm. you just go out like this. Right. So, no, you have to deny your parents over here. That is la ilaha illallah. That is pure Islam. Right. No compromises, no adjustments. Whatever is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in each and every aspect, that is pure Islam. Hmm. That's what I said. We are all biological Muslims. Hmm. Hmm. We don't follow pure Islam. And as Imam Ali ibn Hussain alayhi salam says very nicely in his dua, I always remember this statement. Who is going to tell me, who is going to tell me whether I am following pure Islam or not? Right. That's a very powerful question. Who is going to tell me? Hmm. He says, your zameer, mm -hmm. your conscience mm -hmm. is the best kazi, is the best judge. Right, right. You know from inside yourself you are doing wrong. Right. You are not following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. You know from inside. Mm. You know initially. Right. But when you start to do repeatedly, you deny the orders of Allah and follow others, you become adulterated. That layers of dust come so much that now you cannot listen to the call of your conscience. Mm. This this is very, very helpful. So when we talk of pure Islam, we clearly talk of certain impure paths or streams, right? Yes. So the question is, how did these impure streams come into being in the first place? This is, again, we started the discussion with this, that the the composition of human beings' creation is what? Hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants human beings to achieve nearness. Who? Who is going to achieve nearness inside human being? Right. This body? Hmm. This body is going to die and finish over here. Right. The human being has got an outer self and an inner self. Right. Which in Islam we term it as ruh, nafs, right. spirit, whatever we term it. But in other religions also, the same is there. The batin and the zahir. Right. The inner side which is not materialistic. And the outer side, which is materialistic. Hmm. Now, when Allah is telling you to do this journey of nearness, He is not persuading you. He is giving you a choice. Whether you want to do or you don't want to do. It's your choice. You always have multiple options in front of you. Now, wh how, what factors are there on which a human being is going to make a decision that if I do this act, I will come near, go near to Allah. And if I don't do this or do something else, I will go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, right. Those are desires hmm. which are kept inside human being. Now, desires are not evil. Human being structure is such that he needs desires for survival. You have desire for food. You have desire for water. You have desire for marriage. All these are natural desires. There are 18 such natural instincts present inside human being. Right. Natural right. instincts, natural right. desires. Right. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I have not controlled these desires. Hmm. It's like a flame, a hmm. spark. Hmm. You can ignite it. You can blow it, turn it into a big uh, fire. Or you can shut it down also. Hmm. Hmm. You can do whatever you want to do. It's up to you. Up to you means up to yourself and the society. Yeah. It can it can blow up, it can cross limits, mm. or it can get suppressed completely. Mm. Mm. So these desires, when they cross limits or when they go below a certain level, in both the situation, what will happen? Human being will not be able to do that journey of creation. Right. He will not be on the purpose of creation. He right. will not be achieving proximity of Allah subhanahu wa right. ta'ala. Right. And since the desires are associated with your physical self, hmm. Hmm. with your body, hmm. your food, your sleep. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's system is such that every desire which you have in your body, which your body needs, there's an element of pleasure in it. Hmm. Hmm. Food is pleasurable. Everything is pleasurable. Right. Water is pleasurable. Marriage is pleasurable. Everything is pleasurable. Sleep is pleasurable. Hmm. So there is pleasure also. When there is pleasure... Your desire is there, 
द प्लेजर इज देयर द प्लेजर इज कैप सो दैट यू फुलफिल द नेचुरल डिजायर्स इफ यू हैड नो प्लेजर इन फूड लाइक यू आर फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान इफ सम वन गिवज यू अ पास्ता ओवर यर विदाउट एनी चिलीज विदाउट एनी पेपर इन साइड आई कैन नॉट ईट दिस देर इज नो वाई यू आर हंग्री स्टिल यू डोंट वॉन्ट टू ईट इट because there is no taste hmm. there is no pleasure in that hmm. so unless pleasure is there human being will not go towards it hmm. but the negative side of the pleasure is that because of the pleasure he will cross the limits and go again and right. again and again hmm. and again towards that Quite right. and this is what human being has been doing from the time of creation hmm. the desires have gone up 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 and those have polluted the the path path, path. right and one of the major desires now mm. these are small desires which right. uh, i have discussed about like food right one of the major desires which has caused destruction in the world and taken people away from the right path is power right right is iktidar mm. every human being has a desire for power right and best to, in the past we used to say oh firaun right namrud yeah or hitler yeah they were after power alexandra was mm. after power mm. or we can see today certain leaders of the states are after power mm. but if you go on social media every other person is after power yes we can see that so every human being you mm. can see that every human being wants power mm. oh, i have so many million users i have power mm. and a person who is having x million subscribers you tell him brother can you please put one post for some palestinian to help them hmm he will say how much money you will give me right i can reach 1 million people hmm hmm why should hmm. i help you right this is uh, power no hmm, hmm. he is having that power in hmm, with him hmm, hmm. all this is power this is soft power right right so every human being is after power right from day one habil and kabil hmm. what was the fight about hmm. power i want to be dominant why my brother should not be dominant dominating mm. me mm. nearness of allah means khalifatullah khalifatullah means dominance mm. he is superior to you i don't accept his superiority i need to be superior right so from adam to khatam to onwards human being is always after power and this has caused the major destruction in the world where he went after acquisition 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 everything should be under my control so when when we talk of the impurities if we look at the holy prophet and 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 since his departure from this world which period has been most difficult for muslims in so far as the creation of these impure streams are concerned see the period before islam were also difficult now if we assume that okay mm. the holy prophet established uh, a uh, system of uh, leadership divine leadership in a, so a divine society was established right. okay now he passes away right when he passes away the same system of divine leadership had to continue right okay and it continued in the form of khilafat hmm. all the khalifas claimed that okay we are going to follow the quran and the sunna which means we are going to continue the same system right but they did not had that much uh, capability like the holy prophet and as a result of that many elements within the state got the opportunity to exercise their desire for power like battles were done war booties were coming which made them uh, economically more powerful hmm, hmm. so this was the era after the holy prophet immediately where a decline was happening and adulteration was happening within the society right people were losing their values and they were going after wealth power of wealth power of state power of position this was what the most difficult state which was happening at that time right. and then when you go on a downward journey as allah says in surah qabr i believe that you have two journey najdain the upward journey and the downward journey right the upward journey is qabad very hard very mm. tough like the pressure which comes on the liver mm. it is like that right. but the downward journey is very simple very steep quickly like you're driving a car downhill you don't need to put even anything no gear nothing just put on neutral and it goes down yeah so when you when a society goes on a downward journey very quickly they will reach the end of the slope finish right, right. they will fall downhill and fall understand yeah. upward journey is difficult the prophet put has made all the efforts for the upward journey on a society which was very very lowly disgraceful who were burning who were burying their daughters alive 
who had no even physical hygienic hygiene issues they were so so lowly society hmm. he nurtured them did their tarbiyat got them up then again they went on a downward journey hmm. Hmm. and then the battle of karbala is an example of the most lowliness of the people hmm. Hmm. that the grandson of the prophet and his family is been treated in such a manner so brother this is a very helpful so far you have very intelligently responded to these very fundamental and 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 i dare say some difficult questions that we receive from our youngsters uh, people who think and who would like to learn and understand the basic uh, sort of uh, uh, questions about islam and and what's the purpose of life the purpose of creation and is there a social or a political structure in place for us to follow now the question is that when we look at the because when the holy prophet basically is the last of the prophets so you know he completed the religion the, the set of laws which which are required for humanity in order to achieve their purpose right yeah. so would you like to do quickly a root cause analysis as to where did i mean you 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 have already explained ie that in the first for caliphs period certain sort of you know uh, actions were taken which were not maybe the, the the intention was there to to follow the footsteps of the holy prophet but actually uh, there were some deviations right yeah but do you think there is any other period in which major deviations took place intentionally see the other period which came up which happened almost in the same era of the four caliphs when it started was mm-hmm. uh, if you look at the political system of islam the way from the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that uh, the holy prophet first thing which he did was what hmm. after moving to medina he established an islamic state right then the wahi started to came about various uh, islamic laws salat saum everything came the the islamic practical laws rituals they came later on the first priority was to establish a political system a leadership system where the prophet was the leader he made a mosque masjid mm-hmm. nabawi which was his parliament which was his governance everything was happening from there mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. so he established a system after the holy prophet there are two deviations which are happening one is a shia school of thought and other is a non shia school of thought the shia school of thought believed that the prophet did not go like this based on the instructions of allah as per surah maida where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells the prophet to do a very important task he appointed his successor hmm. very clearly which was uh, imam ali alayhi salam that he appointed him as his successor the non shias believe that no he did not appoint him as a successor though yeah he expressed his greatness and says okay you should he's my wali and maula and everyone should accept him and the definition of wali change and all those things right they believe that no the umma had to decide on their own as to that's the majority view majority view or the tribal view whoever whatever basis it was not like majority view at that time but right. umma has to decide right. who will be the come to some consensus and decide who will be the leader so umma decided mm-hmm. first but again when the second caliph came khalifa comes the decision was not of the umma the first one appointed the second one the third the second khalifa before his death he appointed a shura mm-hmm. six persons and asked them to decide mutually as yes to they did not consult the umma mm-hmm. again when the fourth Hazrat Ali comes over there in power. He comes up, becomes a Khalifa. It was a people hmm. who rushed towards him that now we want you to become the Khalifa of the Muslim state. Right. So you see, the political system is going through a turbulence over here. Right. It's going up and down over right. here. Right. When this happens, when you deviate from your actual root system, hmm. you are creating gaps in the society. which gives opportunities to opportunists who are waiting to overcome the system hmm. and who are those opportunists those opportunists were banu umayya who belong to the same clan of the holy prophet but they accepted islam after fateh makkah and they accepted islam under a con- because they had no they were helpless situation they had hmm. no other option to accept and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in both shia and sunni hadith it is very clear that uh, he has very clearly mentioned that bani umayya should not be allowed to come in power right they should not come in so power so even um, al sunnat accept yeah, yeah even al sunnat accept maulana maududi right very clearly he mentions in his book that uh, it was 
not at all permitted to get bani umayya into power and he says this is his statement i am quoting over here without any prejudice or any sectarianism over here that the third khalifa he said he out of simplicity he allowed bani umayya to come into governance hmm hmm he says that because out of simplicity and one reason he quotes that uh, why banu umayya was not allowed to come into power was that banu umayya was not nurtured by the holy prophet they just a year before he passed away they accepted islam so they right. did not possess those values and ethics which the other sahaba and the companions possessed over there right right so it's very i just gave the example so that it's clear that even the ahle sunnat one of the prominent scholars of ahle sunnat who has a political mindset is also say, is also mentioning this so banu umayya was given a roadway a gaps were there where they passed inside and came inside the system hmm. mawia became amir e sham he became the governor of uh, syria then marwan became the right hand to the third khalifa with banu umayya coming in again when imam ali becomes the khalifa he wanted to uproot this system out the bani umayya out from the system uh, i see right so four years he was continuously in battle two major battles jamal and sifin took place though jamal bani umayya was not directly involved but they were were there were politics played by uh, mawia over there at the back to instigate this right so he took this struggle specifically to remove mawia from power because he was the son of abu sufyan banu umayya completely wanted to eradicate him completely but was not successful hmm. because the treachery done by the people and loss of values and all those things which happened over there so he was not successful in doing that because of that reason bani umayya became more stronger and powerful and to the extent that a person like yazid who was known in the muslim umma as the most corrupt and licentious person hmm. a womanizer a alcoholic person a gambler a, an oppressor a tyrant every every evil was present inside him and mawi appointed him as his, as his successor now this is where imam husain started his struggle is uprising of karbala he also got martyred and could not remove bani umayya from power because his purpose was to awaken the umma the people had to do that people were silent on what or what all was happening they were accepting whoever was coming into power this was the fundamental root cause over here that when people they have seen a reference government they have seen a reference leader hmm. then they become indifferent to whoever is becoming the st- most or uh, the ruler of the muslim state right. to the extent that okay first they were companions fine you accepted them but what about mawia what about yazid who were clearly seen and you are you have uh, saying from the holy prophet that they should not come into power and you have allowed them to come into power this is where this era which came and banu mawia did one thing very clearly what was the what was the challenge for banu mawia the biggest challenge for banu mawia was pure islam i see the pure islam they knew that the day the muslim umma realizes that the pure islam is not with these rulers of the state they might revolt right so what do you do over here you distort islam and present version of an islam which is in favor of the state right so one of the major things which banu umayya did was what that they got such false uh, traditions inside that a wali a ruler of the state whichever way he or she he becomes the ruler of the state the muslims have to accept him blindly as ulul amr yeah only recently is a, a, a al sunnat scholar from karachi he said that you know there are their traditions you know whether or not those are authentic traditions from the holy prophet that's another story but he says that you know the ulul amr the, the 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 person who is in power has to be no this shows that you know now since you have uh, quoted this example if you ask not forget about pakistan there is there are emotional people over there right come to this part of the world right do you think a youth over here people over here will accept this logic that anyone who becomes the ruler whichever way he comes you have to accept him no here the democratic system is what yeah. on one side you have democracy in pakistan democracy yeah. means what people have the rights to appoint the leader yeah so people have a choice no they don't want corrupt person to come okay it's engineered what will happen is different but people have the rights 
to decide the right person for the ruler of the state hmm. and you are telling that anyone even a person like yazid comes into power whichever way you have to accept him so this hmm. is very very stupidity you know this is i would say stupidity insane thing to talk even about doesn't make sense right. at least when you talk something forget about references and all that hmm. first thing your aql should accept what you are talking your hmm. intellect should ex- accept what you are talking so this is going against the intellect over here and this is what bani umayya did over there fabricated hundreds and thousands of traditions in this manner that whoever is the ruler of the state muslim umma has to accept hmm. Hmm. and they kept on inheriting in their family first it was uh, abu sufyan's family then it was marwan's family so it kept on going hmm. Hmm. but still at a stage a stage a state comes that um, people realized people realized banu abbas realized this again from the clan of the holy prophet uh, uh, his uncles abbas progeny now they saw that bani umayyah's crime tyranny is going on to this extent this is the time where we can start an uprising and take power in our hand again they went after power so as i said it was oh, everything was after power Banu Umayyah wanted to come in power and Islam was the biggest obstacle for them the pure Islam but since people are muslims as i said in the beginning that you cannot eradicate islam you cannot eradicate religion you have to adulterate religion adulteration is a most effective means of destroying something hmm. like for example you have uh, little milk which you want to give to your child and you says no i want to drink it or i don't want to give you take it away the child will cry what you do just put water inside adulterated only put <coughs> little milk one one two spoon of milk and rest all water the child will drink considering it as milk this is what was done with islam they did this they adulterated and then they came out with the laws of jabr the theology of jabr mm. that whatever is happening is predestined mm. jabr and qadr jabr and jabr and qadr yeah hmm. so hmm. everything is predestined yeah. if the rulers are killing someone it is allah's will hmm. Hmm. if they are doing tyranny it is allah's will right if someone is getting oppressed it is allah's will hmm. Hmm. so these kind of distortions which they did in the fundamentals of religion resulted into adulterated version of islam right the islam umavi hmm and then over a period of time when umayya is gone banu abbas is gone other kings are coming other rulers are coming mikauli is coming they are all following the same path hmm. because objective is what power we want to remain in power and islam the pure islam is the biggest obstacle against power right so you have to adulterate islam so that people remain muslim they feel that we are muslim and the rulers also maintain power and derive their personal interest whatever they want to do from that if you see the islamic revolution of iran what was that it was a confrontation of pure islam which was the quranic islam which imam khomeini presented to the people that this is pure islam the pure islam is la ilaha illallah and the islam which shah is having in which he is allowing everything all evils are present in the society to the extent that he has gone and submitted to israel that was a fresh time at that time when uh, Israel was just started over there in Palestine and all these things were going on he said this is he is going to this extent is this islam and he said islam gumshuda ast hmm. we need to go and find it islam hmm. is lost hmm. which islam was lost this pure islam right this pure islam which does not accept a tyrant in that seat of rulership whereas the adulterated islam says whoever is in the seat of rulership accept him right fundamental line is over here and the day the muslim ummah understands this difference the muslim world can change right today right. majority of the muslim leaders sitting in the muslim world are not followers of pure islam hmm. they are not they have not executed or implemented pure islam in their state otherwise such a tragedy going on since more than 300 days in palestine you can see the role of the muslim rulers they are supporting the tyrants some are silent some are supporting yes. no one is supporting the palestinian hardly few hardly one or two hmm. not more why this is because of this fundamental difference pure islam is not there 
So in if we look at you, you talked about the Islamic revolution in Iran and Imam Khomeini. So for all Muslims, generally, not just the Shia Muslims, who are the, the sort of uh, personalities that they should uh, seek to follow in order to ensure that they are following the pure Islam and not the, you know, see the other streams? If you go into personality, personalities and start to point out names, it gets into more of a sectarian and uh, prejudicial discussion over here. Right. Whom you should follow. Right. Let's go to the fundamental. Okay. Let's look at the Quran. Okay. What is the religion Quran is presenting? Right. That is a pure religion. Now look at any personality hmm. who, in whose life, in whose, in whose sira, character, you see the Quranic religion. You, everyone claims to be following Quran, unfortunately. No, you have to see the Quranic values. Hmm. Right. Quran says, Fama yakfir bit taagut. Who is the personality who is denying all taaguts? Right. You have to find that personality. Hmm. Like in Shia is very clear that Aima, the 12 Imams, the infallible Imams, they were all on the Quranic religion. So hmm. they are the uswa and the role models, role model for the Shias over there. Hmm. But for Ahle Sunnah, they believe in all companions. They were all good. They were all same. They were okay for respect. Absolutely fine. All companions should be respected in the same manner. But they were not all same. Yeah. You have to assess them on Quranic principles and follow the ones who were following the Quranic principles properly in their life. Hmm. Hmm. Even in this era, when you have to follow someone, you have to see who is who is living his life or. Managing a society as per on the Quranic principles. Now, what is the Quranic principle like in this era? Palestine is the biggest issue. Right. So, go to Quran and ask, ask Quran, what is the duty of Muslim Ummah and the duty of Muslim rulers in this situation? Find those personalities who are following, who are on the line of Quran, which Quran is telling them. The Quran is telling when people, when you see people oppressed, why don't you answer to them and become, a, is there any wali, any nasir? So who is the wali and who is the nasir in this area, in this era for the Palestinians? You have to follow them then. I see. It's very clear. Right. See, unless we come out of this prejudice, hmm. we will not be able to find the right path. Fundamental problem in finding the right path, as Maulana Rumi says very nicely that, the journey towards Allah doesn't need any accelerator. Right. The journey towards Allah is only one thing. Remove the obstacles. I see. Right. Right. It's like, you know, you are on a road where there is no friction. Hmm. Hmm. It's, like a, it's like a very marble uh, kind of a slope. You put a car over there, a toy car, quickly it will go down. Yeah. yeah. But if you put some obstacles in between, it will stop. Correct. You have to remove obstacles. Right. And biggest obstacles is inside ourselves. Mm. Ana, ego. Mm. Mm. We have religious ego in ourselves. Oh, how can I be wrong? Mm. How can my forefathers be wrong? How can Banu Umayyah be wrong? Mm. How can Yazid be wrong? Right. No, no, you know, the, the majority within the, uh, you know, Muslim community is, is Sunni Muslims, right? Now, when we talk about or you talk about Vilayat and Imamat, they say that oh, these are very, very Shia beliefs, right? And uh, Imamat is a Quranic belief, yeah. not a Shia so belief. So could you please explain that for, 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 for the audience as to how do you establish that these are uh, Quranic beliefs and, and everyone, not just Shias, everyone has to follow these? See, Imamat in terminology means leadership. Right. Very simple. Hmm. Imam is a leader whom people have to follow. And Imam is the one who keeps things straight as per our Arabic terminology definition. Something which is which keeps things straight. Right. Okay. So if he makes them follow the straight path, hmm. the sirat mustaqim Now when you say, is Imam Quranic or Shiat? Yes, it's Quranic. Quran talks about Prophet Ibrahim salam, that after all his struggle, after all his struggle, Allah says, we are appointing you as an Imam. Right. And then he questions Allah that, what about my progeny? Hmm. Allah says, yes, I am granting you this dua also. Imamat will be in your zuriyat, in your progeny, but not for zalimin. And what is zalimin? Zalim means in Arabic uh, terminology, zulm is against nur. 
امامت از دیر ان یور پروجنی So imamat is there very clearly it's a leadership was the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam not the imam of the nation he was he was the leader yeah so why are we arguing over there it is a shia belief right but they say, they say that you know that the majority view is that the holy prophet was divinely guided divinely appointed so whether you call him prophet rasul or imam and all three of them he was the last one and then thereafter there is no divine appointment as such so you you mean to say that allah subhanahu wa taala has kept guidance only till 11th hijri and there is no need of guidance after that they say that the holy prophet basically nurtured the ummah and enabled them to know which decide. means which yeah. means yeah. if the holy prophet He has definitely nurtured the ummah. He has given the guidance. He has given the Quran. Everything is fine. Mm. So, if you go by this logic, that you don't need any guidance after the Holy Prophet, okay? Then why there were misguided people after the Holy Prophet? Like Yazid, forget about anyone else. Yazid. Right. Yazid is not something that Shias believe that uh, he was a tyrant. Majority of the Sunnis uh, believe that he was a tyrant and he killed the grandson of the Holy Prophet. Right. Okay. Hmm. So were there not was was there no need for guidance after that? After Holy Prophet, it's against common sense that guidance is required. Allah has not stopped guidance. The principles of guidance were completed in the era of Holy Prophet. You mean the set of laws required? Yes. But execution of guidance has to continue as per the era. Right. Like I'll give a simple example. One of the points of guidance is uh, one of the elements of guidance is higher in a society, modesty. Women and men and women relationship they need to be controlled. Women should be in hijab and men and women should not uh, mix with each other. Na mahram should not be acquainted with each other. Fine. This law has come. Prophet has given the law. in this era where you're living on a digital era do men and women only interact with each other physically the way they were doing in 11th century no they interact on social media yeah. so do you don't you need guidance that what is allowed and what is not allowed you need so guidance principles are completed but its execution the way its specifics would be there they would change by every era and hence you need leaders who understand the principles which are there of principles of guidance they understand it thoroughly who are known as faqi fuqaha as per quran that they do tafakku they are the ones who need to guide the nations in every era right so you need guidance over here it's not that guidance is not required so imam is what imam is the one who is executing guidance like You you don't use the term Imam for Imam e Juma. We do. We do. Imam is Imam e Jamaat. We do. We do that for yeah. Imam e Jamaat. Yeah. Okay. So what is an Imam e Jamaat doing? Leading the prayers. Leading the prayers. Yeah. Ensuring discipline in the prayers. That's right. You yes. can do prayers even without an Imam. Correct. But when you are doing prayers by Jamaat, you cannot say ten person can stand in a row <laughs> and this is Jamaat Salat. Yeah. No. Yeah. Unless one person is standing in front. and they follow him precisely if he stands they stand if he bows down they bow down once he goes in sajda they go in sajda right. so what is this is this not a political system which quran is presenting over here very clearly that you have one leader in the front there are n number of people behind who are following his actions right right they following his actions over there so imam is there in your salat imam is there in your juma But you say imam is not there in the political system, right? 
just because shias have been very vocal in using the term imam and specifically for the 12 imams whom shias consider as infallible that is where the difference has come where the others have become a bit offended that how can you consider 12 persons as infallible imams whereas what about other companions what about other personalities were they not infallible or how can you give infallibility to these whereas others you cannot prove them to be infallible right and what's the difference between vilayat and imamat see they are almost the same thing vilayat is a status right you are wali wali means khalifatullah right you have the authority mm -hmm. when you reach the position of khilafat when you reach the position of khilafat khilafatullah you become the representative of allah you have seek nearness from allah which means allah in in ka ala kulli shay'in qadir allah has the qudrat mm -hmm. then allah has allah is also wali Right. Allah says, "Allahu waliyyukum." Allah is wali. Then Allah says, "I have made Rasul as the wali." Right. Then there is Ulul Amr. Vilayat, vilayat means authority, political authority, social authority, cannot be given to every individual. Mm -hmm. In a society, you need one wali. Right. Like in a family, you need one wali, mm -hmm. the father. Right. You cannot have every member of the family as as wali. Otherwise, there will be fasad. Mm -hmm. So, vilayat is a position. which means you have reached that position but imamat is the political execution of that particular position right next for i'll give a shia example to or not a shia i'll give a prophetic example over here hmm. prophet ibrahim is present prophet lut is present both at the same time right there were many such eras a multiple prophets <clears throat> were present okay they were they are both wali allah every muslim will accept that they are wali allah but who was the imam between the two prophet ibrahim right when the malaika are coming for a punishment for the community of lut they first come to prophet ibrahim mm -hmm. they inform him in a way they are seeking his permission right and he questions them mm -hmm. that there is lut over there mm -hmm. he says no we will secure him mm -hmm. then we will punish the community over here right. you can see clearly imamat over here right. so imamat is an authority which is coming in an execution state but there are two wali one imam right so this is the difference between vilayat and imamat right. vilayat is an authority which anyone can get by reaching that status the divine status but that doesn't mean he is authorized to do governance right governance has to be done by imam one right. person in that particular location society where he would be the imam the leader who will lead them not everyone cannot become leader right. that's the thin line between vilayat and imamat this is this is very very helpful so we are coming towards the end of our our uh, episode and, and program how would you like to if, if if anything has been sort of not asked so far in vis-a-vis distinguishing between the pure path versus you know all of the paths is there anything else that you would like to add in order to clarify this This See, pure topic. Islam, as I said, is la ilaha illallah. Right. <clears throat> pure Islam is that Islam which is in each and every affair of your life. Right. And majority of the affairs of human beings are social. Hmm. Anyone who disconnects Islam from society, take it for granted, he is not following the pure Islam and the Quranic Islam. Hmm. No, he is might be following his Abahi Islam, ancestral, cultural, whatever. but he is not a follower of pure islam hmm. this is the first test which everyone has to do hmm. Hmm. that whether i have disconnected islam from social affairs or not right if i have not disconnected then go a layer down and check are there any specific social affairs where i have disconnected islam i might be saying i need islam in marriage i need islam in divorce i need islam in education but political system i will go and cast a vote and have democracy hmm. so again he is out Okay, so that's very important. So you are saying that democracy, because most of the people prove, in prove in the democracy world, from Quran, they will say shura by nohum. Yeah, this is the the, the reference. Sh point. Shura doesn't means this. Shura means consulting an expert. Right. Uh huh. Shura in Arabic means consulting an expert, taking an expert opinion. That's shura. That's shura. Right. So you discuss between you on those matters where specialization is required. involve an expert mm -hmm. so the political governor of the state imam is asked to do a shura so that in various affairs of the society he should consult an expert like when covid comes 
and you have a imam a leader of the state a muslim leader of a state hmm. he doesn't know about medical things yeah you are right he has to consult a medical expert we saw there. that in our you know we saw that time, yeah. every yeah. state was doing this correct so that is shura right but almost all uh, sunni muslims refer to this particular verse as the basis for establishing the so called islamic democracy they say that we don't believe in liberal democracy but we can consider no so why after the first khalifa they did not do shura by now yeah that that's a, that's a good question but they consider that all these four different methods of appointing or, or selecting or whatever you want to call it uh, the the the, the Uh, you know the 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 successor of the holy prophet or or a ruler in a muslim society all those four four options are possible i mean that's the view that, that no, but how brought. do you prove those four options as being shura bainahum from the quran is quran giving you four four methods of selecting the leader of the state no quran says atiyullah atiy rasuluhu anulul amr hmm. that's it quran is telling hmm. very hmm. clearly yeah quran is telling allah is wali rasul is wali and the one who is in the state of ruku is a wali means that attribute is given certain yeah. attributes you have to find from yeah. the quran yeah. the attributes of a leader those yeah. who fulfill those attributes they are the leader right. simple simple case of talut and jalut in the quran right the community goes to the prophet and says the oppressors the tyrant the jalut is after us we want to do jihad right we want to have a leader okay mm-hmm. now the prophet is present over there right a wali is present over there right so he, he says okay fine he first said so whatever the arguments were there he says okay fine got a leader who was the leader a shepherd talut did the prophet if if shura by nuhum is the method of appointing a leader the prophet would have said shura by nuhum decide yourselves hmm. Hmm. then the leader is appointed by allah as talut they object the elites object hmm. yeah. that we will not accept right allah would have said over there tell the prophet okay shura by nuhum go and do it yourself hmm. again it was not that option was not given to them allah says no talut is the leader because he possesses strength courage abilities potential and he has the knowledge he has hikmat he has knowledge so he has those attributes required to be a leader so the leadership was not done by choice by allah subhanahu wa taala no, i like talut he he does a very good salat does good dua he should become the leader no he possesses those qualities which are required for leadership even if he is a shepherd right right so where is shura bainu hum over here right so, in same ayat are present in the quran no we are not talking about torah and injil over here right, right it is in the same quran surah bakara is talking about this and then you are talking about shura bainu hum So one one question which is associated with this is our Sunni brothers they say that uh, okay the Shias talk about divine appointment and the guidance required for the society etc. So where is this concept of vilayat and imamat now when 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 your twelfth imam is 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 in major occultation? See, vilayat imamat is not about an infallible imam leading the state. Infallibility. is not the condition to become imam infallibility is a virtue of certain imams who have become a reference for us so that we can assess so we can assess the methods the ways of our leaders as a reference to them mm-hmm. okay so we get confused over here that infallible infallible oh when imam is in ghaibat imam is imam last imam is in ghaibat infallible is in ghaibat so what do we do now baba yeah. imamat is not about infallibility you don't need infallible talut was not an infallible the prophet was much higher state of vilayat there was a prophet nabi present over there but in in the presence of nabi allah doesn't says nabi is present he is your leader no so talut is your leader right so your when imam is present or not present leadership is required and if you want righteous leadership it has to be on righteous principles right. who will tell me the attributes of a leader quran will tell me the attributes of the leader if you say shura bainuhum means what bainuhum everyone 10 people are sitting and if those 10 persons are not having the right orientation whom will they will they appoint hmm. Hmm. today in the democratic system 
एन एल्कोहलिक पर्सन हैज़ वन वोट अ जानी हैज वन वोट अ गैम्बलर हैज वन वोट एन अ मौलाना हैज वन वोट ट्रू वट इज दिस इज दस दिस हारमोनाइज विद द लॉजिक ऑफ इस्लाम मैन इस्लाम से फमैक फिर भी तागूत तागूत यू हैव टू डिनाई तागूत कंप्लीटली एंड यू आर गिविंग अ तागूत एंड अपॉर्चुनिटी टू कास्ट अ वोट एंड सेलेक्ट द लीडर ऑफ द स्टेट completely illogical unreasonable we are trying to protect what has been done in the past right we are trying to defend what is going on and don't want to go for the change and that change is not a new change it is some we it's a reversion it's not a change it's a ruju we have to go back to the quranic system which is not present which is not present in our society today and we don't want to go towards that instead we try to justify what we are doing from the quran it is like proving science from quran right the quran is not a book of science right. you start to prove oh, this new invention has come i will prove from the quran hmm 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 understood it is same thing we are doing try to prove democracy from quran right right if democracy was in quran why did the companions the sahaba did not do democracy why did they not ask the entire medina to come and cast vote yeah yeah I understand. Now this this is very powerful, and thank you very much, brother. There are many more questions, but I think inshallah you will give us time in future inshallah. as well, so we we respond to future. Let's you know the questions that we'll receive through email. We'll we'll be basically sharing our contact information with the audience, so we'll receive additional questions, and we'll again request you to please spare time for us so that we can take this discussion forward. So the 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 the, the crux of your discussion and wisdom. that at least i have understood is that the pure stream is the one where you implement the command of allah subhanahu wa taala on yes. 24/7 basis is a complete code of life so it's not individual social on oh no, yeah so you can say both individual as well as social as so, well as social you know yeah. so on on every count you have to submit to allah subhanahu wa taala and and once you start doing it and when you when you follow those people who are doing it then you are basically following the pure stream any yeah, other and the, and the our one point we have a separate discussion all together yeah the samrat the fruits of pure islam first is is a adil society right a just society right right that is the first outcome of a pure islam yeah. which i think is a separate discussion that what is this adil which we are talking about from quranic perspective right right and what is the adil which the world is presenting today yeah. the justice which the world is presenting today and the justice which quran is presenting thank you very much brother we really appreciate thank you very much assalam alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh